I'm very happy to be here. Um, it's uh, only the second time I've, 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 I've spoken in Greece. Uh, once I came to a film school here, and uh, I've, I've always been saying, you know, it's too bad. Like I've never really, we've never had any kind of event like this in Greece, or any kind of master class, or any kind of, uh, uh, you know, I've done them everywhere in Poland and all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, Georgia, and, uh, Serbia, and Belgrade, and. You know, the film schools have in my, invited me, and uh, you know, so I'm happy to uh, finally be able to do something here. And um, you know, this was an exciting year for us. And uh, you know, we had Nebraska, of course, which was a great success. And I'm very happy to hear everybody uh, I've talked to in Greece really enjoyed the movie. So I guess I'm uh, surprised that uh, we still make movies like that in America uh, sometimes. And uh, of course, you know the film. The director is also Greek American. His name is actually Papadopoulos. So uh, Alexander Payne is actually Konstantinos Papadopoulos. So it's true. So, um, but we can talk about. I'll just have an open, uh, open floor for you guys, and uh, uh, we can talk about Nebraska or about um, you know smaller. I mean, you talked about what small movies. <laughs> We can talk about big movies. We can talk about uh, comparison, you know, different work styles between maybe Europe and, and uh, uh, I mean, I work in the studio system, so if you want, I mean, you can ask about that. It's a, it's a little different than uh, regular, f you know, filmmakers, you know, filmmakers, the way uh, <clears throat> you probably use, are working, you know, with, um, Yorgos Lanthimos and, uh, you know, those kind of, uh, or, uh, you know, pretty much a any European production. I mean, we have a, a system, you know, where people get hired, you know, the director gets hired by the, the studio. Uh, usually he doesn't write the script, um, so they're not really filmmakers in that sense. I mean, there's some exceptions, you know, there's a, um, there are a few, of course, Wes Anderson uh, um, and uh, Alexander Payne and... Uh, you were first. Hi. Um, uh, I wanted to ask you, what are the basic differences uh, between working in a studio uh, production and working independently in terms of creativity and time management? Uh, yeah, well, first of all, I mean, again, it, it varies. It depends on the director. Um, uh, but typically, in the studio, um, the director is really hired to manage the movie stars. You know, so he's in charge that they're happy. Uh, of course, you know, that they deliver the performances that they want to. You know, of course, they want to be filmmakers, but the studio really, uh, in a way, you know, they hire the director. I mean, there are exceptions. Again, you know, I have to keep saying that. I mean, Chris Nolan is also a producer. He does, uh, you know, he's in control of the whole project. But, but, uh, and therefore, you know, the, the role of a cinematographer is different, I think, also, because you are uh, more in charge, really, of the way the film is going to be captured. I mean, of course, you know, you have a, a prep period uh, and you discuss with the director, uh, you know, what, or you watch movies and you decide the, the language of the, the, the film. Um, but. Uh, um, ultimately, once you start shooting, I think you're you're really being put more in the situation where you're in charge of uh, setting up shots. Um, I, I personally am involved very early on in in the blocking when I work with actors, um, and then uh, um, you know I get I get uh, I get to to really pick the coverage um, often. And often I can't, I do the lensing, I do pretty much everything. And then there are certain directors that I, that won't even, you know, you ask them uh, to, you know, look through the, in the old days, you know, to come and look through the uh, viewfinder. And, and they, they don't even really, they do it, but they don't really want to, you know, they have a lot to handle with the, you know, they have, you know, they're busy with the actors. I mean, you, it's really management of those movie stars. You know, there's a lot of dynamics that, that are, are different. And, and, you know, that's why, like, the, the Alexander Payne experiences are very different. They're much more like a European movie. So, um, and it's, uh, you know, on Sideways, I was thinking, like, why is this so different? Why is it, um, 
why does this feel different? And it's, I realize it's because it was Paul Giamatti and, uh, and Thomas Hayden Church, and they're not really, you know, they were like normal people. They were like, you know, they wouldn't leave a set. I mean, actors leave, uh, then, you know, it takes a while to get them back. So, you know, all the dynamics of how you lay out your day, you can't, you, you, you have much less flexibility. So in a way, it's much more creative and more interesting to work on smaller pictures. And that's always something, you know, I want to say, especially to, <clears throat> to, to, to filmmakers or to filmmaking countries that don't have, you know, the possibilities and the budgets we do. I mean, you have to embrace that. Uh, it's really liberating in, a, in many ways. I mean, you're able to work, you know, faster. You can take advantage of, um, you know, situations, you know, if something's happening light-wise, you're able to decide to to block a scene quickly outside in front of the house. Uh, you don't have to move, you know, we're constantly moving trucks and uh, generators and cable runs and uh, so it's, it's, it's great actually. I mean, I, I think, you know, some of the greatest images and the most beautiful, most uh, uh, poetic images I see are from, uh, you know, these smaller movies. And, and, you know, you look at the Mexicans. I, mean, I was just looking at some kid's reel from Mexico. He has no age and nothing, and it's just incredible, you know. But, and then I said it to my agent. I said, you should. And he goes, yeah, but, you know, they, they're just out there with the camera, you know. Like, they don't have, it's a, it's, a, it's a big machine, you know. It's like a big lead on your foot that you're, uh, <clears throat> you know, of course, Certain movies can't be done differently. I mean, if you're doing, you know, Iron Man 3 or, you know, uh, Inception or, you know, uh, Lone Ranger, I mean, those are gigantic productions, you know, with a thousand people working on it, you know. Uh, on Pirates of the Caribbean, there are like, you know, 1,200 people working on it. They're like 40 accountants, you know, so. <laughs> um, so you know, but anyway, I think it's 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 important to to understand that you know the, the 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 limitation in budget. Of course, you can't make those movies, but you can make so many so many beautiful stories, and you can you know be working really uh, quickly and 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 take advantage of that. And and especially with you know the technology becoming so much more accessible, with the lighting equipment becoming so much smaller and lighter, and and the cameras being more sensitive. I mean, you really can do beautiful things. Uh, without a lot of uh, lighting equipment and you know we I mean I light a lot like Nebraska actually has a lot of lights but uh, you know mostly what we find ourselves doing these days with uh, Alexa is taking light away you know it's all about negative uh, fill as we call it just you know trying to eliminate all all the secondary bounces and all my day exteriors are, are without <coughs> electric light they're all with just blacks you know you, we create shape through through negative, so um, and and that's easy to do. You know, you just get something and paint it black and hold it up. So um, um, you know. Um, anyway, those are, I suppose. I don't know if that answered your question, but uh, I mean, there are many aspects to it. But but yeah, I think um, that's the main thing. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, talking generally, not on any specific. Uh, project. Uh, do you ever feel uh, obstructed by needs uh, or imposed to you by VFX? Uh, not really. You know, I've worked with the greatest VFX guys in the world, and usually the better they are, the less requirements they have. Like, I know somebody's not good when he's standing next to me wanting all kinds of information and stuff, because I work with, like, five-time Academy Award winners, and I always ask, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. And then I've had the opposite where they're like, you know, there and measuring and stuff. And, you know, to me, it seems strange what he's doing. And I ask him, what shouldn't we do this? And there's no, no, like we did. And then I know they're not good. So, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, unfortunately, often by the time you find out they're not that good, it's too late. So, you know, you're stuck with it. And, you know, then it's, um, and the visual effects, I mean, it's, you know, people tend to, um, you know, rely a lot on. Okay, that's my music collection. <laughs> um, they they depend to uh, rely a lot on 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 that. And you know, I've been on productions where we've gotten in trouble. You know, like big action movies, and and they go, oh, "We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And we're going to fix this. We're going to don't worry about that." 
uh, and I'm thinking, yeah, I know it can be done, but you know, still somebody has to do the work. You know, there's still uh, uh, somebody physically has to have the time to do it. And and I've been on pictures where, um, you know, they just didn't get done in time. You know, because they have a release date, and the release date gets set. And you know, if it, if you go from 600 VFX shots to 1,200, that's not usually a solution. Yes, it can it be done in the right time, but uh, you know, and we've had uh, release prints go out to certain markets where it's uh, temp VFX, you know, on big pictures, like, uh, you know, big movies, with Tom Cruise in them and stuff, so. Yeah, <laughs> next. <laughs> go ahead, I'll take a couple more. I can hear you. Uh. Oh, great. This is all captured. It's going to be on Greek internet. Uh, I have two really unrelated questions. One is, I've always been really curious in the U.S., how does one get into the studio system as a DP? Uh, finish college and then, or studies, or... Uh, how do you become a studio DP? Yeah, for studio um, films in the Well, first of all, I mean, I speak a lot in film schools. I speak a lot at uh, AFI, UC, UCLA, all the big film schools. Um, and um, I personally didn't go to film school, but that doesn't mean anything. And we are doing an online film school now. We're launching one with Janusz Kaminski and Wally Pfister, uh, which is the three of us, because we all started at Roger Corman, which was a very low-budget BC movie filmmaker. And they were at AFI. I didn't, couldn't afford to go to film school and didn't really uh, even try. But I got lucky. I started shooting shorts for free from, for friends. I actually shot a UCLA graduate film uh, without going to UCLA. Like Alexander was doing one. He interviewed me. He didn't hire me, but somebody else did. And then, um, so, uh, but when I, when I t talk about film schools, I mean, usually I say, uh, I don't think you, I don't think necessarily what you need to learn um, in school is, is what, what the job is about. Now, it does have advantage of film school because you're meeting, you know, you're, you're forming groups with people. That's, you know, the most, uh, is that you meet people and, and that, you, um, uh, that you form friendships with. You find people, find people that want to do the same kind of films because it's all uh, ultimately a matter of taste, like what kind of movies you want to do. So find people who, find a producer. If you're a director, find a producer who can support you and help you. And, and if you're a DP, find a director that has, wants to make the same kind of movies and then form these friendships. And, and a lot of why A5, for example, is so successful is because those people that you know, graduated at AFI, they stick together and then, you know, they, they stay and they move up in the industry together. Um, uh, and, and other than that, I would say, you know, just uh, try to get on, on sets, you know. Uh, I mean, people ask me, well, I, wa I want to go to America. I'm thinking about getting into the film business and, you know, how, how did you do, do it, you know? Well, how should I do it? I go, it's a, you know, a 30-year process for me. You know, I can't really sum it up in, in one thing. I mean, it's, uh, first of all, you need to be ready to dedicate basically your life to it and be ready to be there 10 years. I mean, like Wally Pfister uh, was op operating for me and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, we worked on the electrical crew and then I gave him second unit and then he worked, you know, he's done 25 C movies that nobody's ever seen, and one of them was Memento, you know, and then that changed everything. Within five years, he had five nominations. And, 